All right, I've just gotten down to one of my favorite places, not only here in Plaquemines Parish, but on the planet. It's called Woodland Plantation. Just an absolute historic site here. An amazing place. It is actually an old plantation that's been restored by Foster Cropel and his family. Look how cool this place is. Now that's the main house. It's been here like, I don't know, 150, 200 years, quite a while. But there's a bunch of other houses on the grounds that also are really historic. And the place is just full of beautiful trees and plants and flowers, just an amazing grounds here. Now Woodland was actually flooded in Hurricane Ida just last year. I don't know, like four or five feet of water right here for actually a couple of weeks. But Foster's gotten the place mostly renovated really back to normal put a lot of work into it you would never even really know I was here before the event before Ida so I got to see what it looked like then and it really to me looks about the same this is where I stayed last time this is where I think I'm staying tonight obviously you can see the history in this place look how beautiful this is just amazing Now part of the experience of staying here at Woodland is eating incredible food. The food here is not, it's not normal. Like it is literally five star food, excellent, excellent meals here. So that's next on the agenda. Really looking forward to dinner tonight. All right, Woodland has a number of boats, a number of guides that operate out of the plantation here. You can see their boats, obviously mostly flats boats. And this is what's called Spirits Hall. It's an old church that they moved here. You can tell by the stained glass windows. Beautiful, beautiful place. And that's where dinner is. Fried shrimp and fried alligator bites. Boys, that look good. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Shogun. Appreciate it. Fried shrimp. Really well fried, too. It looks really good. Piping hot at the moment. Got to give it a second. Excellent. Now they call these alligator bites. Not sure if they're real alligator or not. We'll see. I think it is. Very good. White bean soup. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's great. All right, here we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect, delicious. All right, after a truly fantastic night, I've come into a bayou that's new to me. I saw it on a map and it looked great. And now that I'm here, I like it even more. But sometimes looks can be deceiving. Let's see if that's true today. All right, my plan is to drift the length of this bayou. The tide is just ripping out of here. We're at the tail end of a fall, but there's a beautiful point right here on the edge of this lagoon. A lot of grass coming through here. So I don't know if I can throw this cork or not, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. I definitely can't stay in here long because I will have no troll motor battery left. The tide is just screaming. Right here at this mouth, it's 6.2 feet. Really like that. It's been blowing every day here in South Louisiana and it's gonna blow today, I know. It's supposed to be 10 to 15, but right now it is slick. And what happens when it's slick in the spring? The gnats come out and they are definitely out. <laughs> oh, 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 had a hit, had a hit. Had a little bobble on my cork. I got a TKO, a red eyes TKO shrimp under a Versamax knocker cork. It's my go-to for finding fish up shallow. There's got to be fish on that point. Boy, does that look good. <laughs> All right, I heard angels singing when I saw this point, but sadly we've got nothing but one half-hearted takedown. So you can't force what isn't there. Time to move on. The baiting, going back down the bayou like I wanted to do, or working this lagoon, because it looks really, really nice. Whatever I do, I gotta put on some Mars Romance. These bugs are terrible. Whew. Wait, Nats. All right, I'm gonna work the length of this bayou. Let this tide just rip me along here. Man, it is really, really moving quickly. I've got a shrimp creole matrix shad behind a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. Water right here in, these, in this straightaway is 6.1 feet, but I saw these bends when I was coming in. We've got some 12 foot water, a really good looking bayou. 
The water's gorgeous. Just gonna have to cover some water and see if we can figure out where some fish are holding. This is the time of year those speckled trout get in this deep water in the bends and you can really catch a bunch of them. You just gotta find them. There's a fish. There's a fish. Something file hooked. <laughs> croaker, croaker. Well, it's a start, not the target species. It's something the target species would eat. Now, interestingly, that's, that's why these trout get in these bends to eat baby croakers. The croakers spawn offshore in the winter and their fry are big enough now to get eaten by trout and they collect in these bends. Ooh, there's one. That's a trout. That's a trout. Yep. 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 Nice trout. Oh, he came off. Dad gum it. Oh, shoot. That was a beautiful speckled trout. Hooked my own tail. That didn't help. Look at that. Yep. Hooked my tail. All right. That's a little validation, though. Man, he tagged it, too. I don't think that fish was ever even hooked. I just hooked my own tail. Oh, there's another one. Uh, this feels red fishy. Or foul hook trout. Yep, foul hook speckled trout. There we go. I'll take it. I'll take it. Cooked him in the gill. But he is legal. All right. 13 and a half inches. I really, really, really love this style of fishing because number one, it's kind of challenging. Number two, those specks, man, they hit so hard. Very aggressive. Oh, there he is. There he is. That's definitely a trout. Oh, good fish, pretty fish. Come on, dude. Man, you're not as big as I thought. Just fighting him against that current. I mean, it's not like he's bad or anything. Shrimp Creole is such a deadly color in this pretty water. Oh, I love it. If the water were a little more stained, I would go with Limbo Slice. I feel like that color shows up really well in that deeper water. But this water is, I mean, spectacular. Now I do this style of fishing a whole lot in the spring. It's the first time this year I've done it. I've been chasing some other things, but nice to see them back in these deep holes. And once I find the fish, I really like fishing against this current. Just kind of picking that bait up and putting it down, letting that tail flap in the current. The bad thing with this bayou is it's full of grass, so I keep getting grass on my bait. But that's all right, because there's a lot of trout down there. I got three bites on three successive casts Landed two of them, and now I cannot get another bite. <laughs> That's unusual. Normally when you find them in these deep holes, they're stacked up, and you can leave with your limit. Now, my limit is 10. I limit myself to 10 speckled trout. Plenty enough. Don't need to keep any more than that. There's one. That's a trout. Yep. Come on, dude, jump right in the boat. There you go, I'll take you. Hoo -hoo -hoo, favorite time of year. Love when these fish are in these bends. There's one. That's a good trout. Man, did he jump four feet out the water or what? There we go. These are not giant fish. That first one I hooked was really nice. Since then, they've been about 14 inches or so. That's about, nah, this one's probably a little less than that. Oh, good. He was hooked well. 50% of my casts end up like this. And you're not going to get a bite when that's the case. And by the way, that's not grass that's on the bottom in this deep water. That's just grass that's coming out of that lagoon with this hard falling tide. 
And whenever you do this, you always got to find the sweet spot. And I thought the sweet spot would be up here. I passed over that 16 feet real close to that point. So I thought they'd be up on that ledge. Made several casts there, didn't get a bite. So started fishing against this current here. And that's definitely where these fish are. It's not the biggest school I've ever run across. I'm definitely having to work a little bit, but it's fun. Sometimes you get in these holes and it's literally every single cast. These are making me earn them, which I really like. I almost prefer that. Damn it. There he is. Just had to move to the back of the boat. Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. Come hop on the Avid. There you go. Welcome to the team. Ooh, look, hooked him in the nose. Hooked him well in the nose. Kind of makes you wonder, like, did this fish, good night. Did he hit the bait and the hook was just above here and that's how I hooked him? Probably so. You know, a lot of times I think when you foul hook fish, it's a fish that came to check out the bait, maybe hit, ooh, maybe hit it and spit it or just checked it out, kind of got too close and bumped into that hook. But I think that one actually hit the bait just didn't get the actual hook part in his mouth and hooked him in the nose. It's my theory anyway, who knows. Everyone. He's either foul hooked or he's a little bigger. No, he's not foul hooked. And he's not all that much bigger. There he goes. got him we got him settle down settle down that's a nicer trout that is a nicer trout let's see how big he is about 14 and a half that's the first one all day i didn't feel hit grateful to have him but man <laughs> i much prefer when they tattoo the bait this grass is kind of a menace but it's so critical to this bite. This only happens, at least in my experience, in marshes that have freshwater influence. If you're fishing in an area where you can catch bass up shallow, that's where you're likely to find these fish deep. Those highly saline marshes, I've never been able to find trout deep in, the, in those areas. I mean, certainly in the winter you can, but not this time of year. Oh, dirty dog. There he is. He came back for it. Or his buddy did. Oh, look at you. Another croaker. Croaker. When I was a kid, that's all I fished for. Well, croakers and white trout. Those fish have a lot of nostalgia for me. I really like them. Just a spunky, cool little fish. When I was a kid, we used to catch bull croakers, some really, really nice ones, up to maybe a pound or so, not giants. Catch some bigger ones offshore, but I never did that. A really, really good fried. Well, that marsh romance definitely did its job while I needed it, but unfortunately I don't need it now because <laughs> that wind's picking up. If you fish South Louisiana this spring, you've probably fished in a, on a windy day because, man, every day is windy now. It was nice having that little break this morning. A lot of times when I do this, I go back to areas where I've caught them in the past. This spot I just discovered today, and that's always more satisfying, right? Something else to add to your arsenal, something else to check in the future. Just means more catching them in a new area. There's at least a 50% chance I'll come back to this spot again in the future and I catch a fish. At least 50%. Every day is different. On days like that, you just go hunting and you find a new spot. Now here comes a crabber. We'll see if he turns into our bayou. He is slowing down. See if he goes left or right. 50-50. And he's coming this way. Of course. <laughs> Alright, fortunately these fish are on the bottom in some pretty deep water. So let's hope that crabber didn't mess him up. We'll see. I've seen it go both ways. Oh, there's a fish. If we get him in, 
He is fish number 10. Come on, dude. That is a Marshman limit. Not the biggest of the day, but definitely beyond 12 inches for sure. We're gonna check him. Yep, he's actually 13 inches. Plenty big enough, and that is it. That is our limit. All right, if you're gonna come do this, and I definitely highly encourage you to come do this. I mean, this has a shelf life. It ends, I mean, might extend to the end of May, and that's about it. These fish then all move outside. You can sometimes catch some stragglers into June, but generally May is it. But there are some things that you need to keep in mind and you definitely wanna have on hand. The first, and I cannot stress this enough, get the best rod you can afford. A lot of times these bites are really subtle and you need those really high-end rods to feel those subtle bites. Not only that, the really good rods tell you when you have just a little tiny blade of grass on your bait. You can just feel it. You can just sense it, it feels different so you don't waste time with that cast. And I gotta admit, I've kinda changed philosophy a little bit on the rod that I use for this. I used to use a medium heavy because I like that quick reaction when you feel that bite. Because a lot of times those fish hit it and spit it right away, and you can pick up a lot of line really quick with those medium heavies. The problem is the fish have a much easier time throwing those hooks. So I've downsized this year to a medium. I've got this tournament concept rod and I really like this thing. It's medium power, super light, very, very light rod, really comfortable to fish, don't get tired. And I definitely found today the fish had a tougher time throwing the bait than they typically do when I fish this way. Something else you always wanna bring, 3 8 ounce death grip jig heads. I love absolutely everything about this jig head from the shape of the head to the bait keeper. I mean, baits just don't slide off. A lot of times you'll catch 25, 50 fish doing this and that bait does not slide off even after all those speckled trout tattooing it. And another thing that is very important, super sharp must add hooks. These are great hooks. This jig head is the perfect jig head. It's not cheap, it's expensive, but I'd rather spend a little bit of money and hook a whole lot more fish. You don't wanna spend all the money to get out here, come fishing and not be able to get fish in the boat. Invest in death grip jig heads. You also wanna bring two colors of matrix shad the Limbo Slice, you want this in water that's got a little stain to it. I just feel like it shows up better on the bottom. I've had great success over the years on this. This water today was special, really, really nice. So I went with the Shrimp Creole. Both of these are absolutely always in my tackle box. Probably could have gotten by with a Holy Jolie today as well, but this Shrimp Creole, really, really love it. Fish in deep water when the water's clean. All right, thanks again to Foster Grappel for an absolutely fantastic evening at Woodland. Just really love that place. Kudos to him for getting it put back together a second time. You can't even tell Ida even happened. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on. And hopefully then we find fish as quickly as we did today.